friends, this is David Warren, and I welcome you to another chapter of the Unknown Presidents. Today's Unknown President will be our 21st President, Chester A. Arthur, who served from 1881 to 1885. Here to give you the story of Chester A. Arthur, Colonel Kensington. Colonel, tell us what you know. Well now, uh, Chester A. Arthur, uh, I find him to be quite an intriguing individual. Uh, uh, Arthur was the son of a preacher man. He uh, was a very intelligent individual. Uh, as he grew up, he decided he wanted to be a lawyer. And uh, his main concern was civil rights. Uh, he was uh, always championed the uh, unfortunate and was quite a good lawyer too. Uh, in 1856 he met his future wife, the very beautiful uh, Ellen Hurden. Uh, she was the daughter of uh, William Hurden, who was a naval commander. Unfortunately, he went down with his ship, the SS Central America, off the coast of Cape Hatteras during a horrible uh, hurricane. He was able to save 152 of his passengers before the ship went down, taking him and 400 uh, lost souls with him. Young Ellen was only 20 when her father died. Uh, Arthur and uh, his uh, 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 Ellen were married uh, in uh, 1859, and uh, uh, they were very much in love with each other. Chet Arthur's great propensity for passion is shown in a letter that he wrote to his 19-year-old sweetheart. He writes to her, I know you are thinking of me now. I feel the pulses of your love answering to mine. If I were with you now, you would go and sing for me Robin Adair. Then you would come and sit by me. You would put your arms around my neck and press your soft, sweet lips over my eyes. I can feel them now. The authors were very partying people. Uh, Ellen was a very accomplished soprano, beautiful voice, and she would sing for different benefits all about New York City. Yes, Chester Arthur wanted only the finest things in life, whether it be wine or clothes or jewelry, and he loved to go traveling. His sweet wife Nell, who was from an aristocratic family, taught him what the finer things of life were all about. Here in this picture, he is shown with his family and friends playing a very stylish game of croquet. Uh, uh, Arthur uh, uh, continued his job as a lawyer. When the Civil War came in 1861, Arthur served for a brief time as a quartermaster general. And then, he entered into the steamy world of politics. Uh, oh, Arthur loves the game of politics. He uh, uh, was very good at making friends. Uh, he was a very gregarious fellow. Uh, he himself was not a corrupt individual, but he turned his head uh, at others who were corrupt, and he knew about it. Uh, but he soon became appointed uh, to the highest paying federal job in the government, the customs collector in New York City. And uh, he was the customs collector for a number of years. And uh, his, his role in politics and uh, uh, strained his marriage with young Ellen. Quite unfortunately, young beautiful Ellen's life was cut short. Uh, when she caught a nasty cold in January of 1880 and died of pneumonia two days later. 
Arthur was absolutely grief-stricken over the death of his wife. Uh, well, in 1880, he got involved in the election for president. And in the election of 1880, Chester Arthur joined the ticket with James A. Garfield as his vice presidential running mate. And so, he was sworn in as vice president on March the 4th, 1881. And, uh, however, Arthur didn't stay vice president very long. Now, on July 2nd, 1881, President Garfield was shot. Uh, Arthur was devastated and prayed daily for the president's recovery, for Arthur did not want to be president. However, uh, on September the 19th, 1881, Garfield died, and Arthur became the 21st president of the United States. Arthur, uh, 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 of course, not having uh, a first lady, uh, having his wife die shortly before he entered office, his sister, uh, Mary uh, Arthur, took over the duties of first lady. Uh, Arthur held many elaborate, uh, elaborate parties in the White House. Uh, and Arthur, deciding that his uh, finagling ways in his early career as a politician, uh, he decided perhaps that was not the best way to go. And he wanted to leave a legacy as a great president. So he began working for civil service reform. And the one good thing Arthur did uh, during his four years in office was he signed into law the Pendleton Civil Service Act of 1883. Gave jobs to people based on their uh, experience and their ability and not their political persuasion. Arthur really did not like being president. Uh, he was often late to work, coming into the office uh, late, and uh, he took a lot of vacations. He loved to get away from the White House. In 1883, President Arthur took a vacation to the state of Wyoming. One of the president's favorite pastimes was fishing. Uh, he took vacations all over the place. And uh, he just decided he just no longer had the stomach for politics uh, and decided he wanted to leave the presidency at the end of his term. Uh, and also secretly, uh, unbeknownst to most people, uh, Arthur was suffering from Bright's disease a disease of the kidney, and uh, he, deep down, he knew that he was dying. And so Arthur did not run for a term of his own, and uh, he left office in 1885 and lived a little over a year, uh, dying in 1886. Uh, reportedly his last words were either, life is no longer worth living, or he may have said, no, doctor, nothing more. Uh, a, a truly uh, interesting individual, uh, a shop dresser. He was known as a dandy in his day. Uh, but that's the story, my friends, of Chester Allen Arthur. Thank you very much, Colonel. Well, there you have it, my friends, the story of our 21st president, Chester A. Arthur. We'll be back again later this week with another unknown president. Until then, this is David Moore. Back to you, Wolf.